Welcome to California Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz and we are joined today by Mark Takano. He is a member of the U.S. Congress. You have just finished your first term. Congratulations, sir. I want to get a sense from you about that first term. What was it like for you to be a member of the United States Congress? Well, it's been an extraordinary, extraordinary honor and privilege. Sure. And I'm so grateful to the people of Riverside County right. for sending me there. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, despite the dysfunction, <laughs> um, people, I, I never, you, you might have asked me, uh, you right. might have even asked me right. what was the most surprising thing. And I have a hard time, I used to have a hard time answering that, but I think now I can say the surprising thing is even against the challenge of a dysfunctional Congress, right. the hyper-partisanship, the Tea Party right. obstruction, I was still able to do remarkable things for this district, such as uh, $3 million in uh, federal dollars and benefits, $2 million of that $3 million is mostly veterans benefits veterans. we're able to mm -hmm. reconnect veterans to. Um, I was how? able to... I really want to ask you, how were you able to do that? Because through, the Democrats were the minority and so... Well, through, through really diligent casework. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hired uh, Captain Ignacio Romero, Reserve Captain Ignacio Romero, uh, who can relate to the veterans mm -hmm. and get them to open up and uh, be patient with them and know how they think and how they are. Uh, so uh, having veterans know that we have a, an office that's a safe place to come and mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to be very supportive of them. Uh, and uh, we troubleshoot with the VA, we uh, you know, call who we need to call to kind of uh, rattle a few cages and uh, you know... And suffice it to say, sir, the VA had a tough summer. <laughs> had a tough summer. <laughs> right. Had a very tough summer. Um, uh, it, was a, it wasn't one of these trumped up scandals, it was a real scandal, mm. and it was more systematic, uh, systemic than, than right. we had anticipated. Um, I hate to say that uh, tragedy uh, gives us an opportunity, it was a real tragedy, I want to downplay the tragedy I know of, what you're saying, uh, though. of these people on wait lists, mm -hmm. but you know, the Republicans also, by all, and the Democrats both, we, we had extensive committee hearings, mm -hmm. it opened up uh, an opportunity to talk about, well, what are the solutions? And so we did pass a bipartisan Senate, uh, mm -hmm. bipartisan veterans health bill. Mm -hmm. um, each house had passed a different version. I was appointed to, to the conference oh, committee. Oh, really? Uh, well, you know, for a freshman member to be appointed to right. a conference yes. committee, yes. this was uh, something that surprised uh, me. I never, th and you know, the veterans committee is not that often thought of as the center of like uh, the power in the house. But you know what? It's one of the few places where actually the two parties cooperate. And in this district, we're sitting in your district right now, it's a very important It's community. the ninth, we have the yeah. ninth largest veterans population by county, I didn't uh, know Riverside that. County. Right. Uh, San Bernardino's not far behind. So here's the thing, uh, uh, the, the, the bill uh, was gonna address the wait list problem for veterans right. by giving them access to non-VA care in the private, uh, yes. the private doctors, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, give uh, uh, hospitals, uh, the VA hospitals more spots, uh, right. more, more doctor slots. But I argued, look, for the Inland Empire, we have a general doctor shortage. Right. So even if uh, our vets go see a non-VA doctor, uh, they're going to face wait lists there. Uh, and Loma Linda VA hospital is going to have to compete uh, in the general, in a market mm -hmm. that's short of, short of doctors and how we're going to lure them here to the Inland Empire. So I said, what we need is more medical residencies. You know that we have a general shortage of doctors uh, not just in the Inland Empire, but all over the country, and it's a real problem for the implementation of the ACA. Well, your timing couldn't have been better, because as you know, right in your district is UCR, UC Riverside, and they opened a medical school. Well, that is true. That's exactly true. Uh, however, Brad, the more medical students are actually not the heart of the problem. The heart of the problem is that, not many Americans know this, but nearly all of the medical residencies in our, countries, uh, in our country is subsidized by the federal government. People don't know that. The real, con know that. The yeah. real on off switch on the supply of doctors is whether or not the federal government decides to expand the number of residencies uh, that it funds. Uh, so are we on or off right now, especially well, with the ACA, well, like you said? Well, we've been frozen under Medicaid and Medicare budgets. That, those two budgets fund 90% of the medical residents in the country. Mm -hmm. The remaining 10 come from uh, the VA. Uh, under, the, <laughs> under the Affordable Care Act, there's a small portion of new residencies that are funded at some of the health clinics. So it's, it's, it's small. Mm -hmm. The AMA has put out numbers that we need you know, 5,000 new medical residencies 
a year to sort of deal with this shortage. But sir, you know that for better or for worse, the Medicaid expansion has been wildly successful in California. And so it has been we need more residents. Well, well, the big criticism of Car Cover California is that, oh, not, well, here's the quick, right. it's not Cover California, that, that, that people can get insurance but they're having a hard time right. finding doctors. There's right. narrow physician narrow networks. Narrow networks. And not all the physician networks are joining Cover California plans because they're not reimbursed enough. That's a separate, that's a something that we need to fix right. in the next Congress. Um, but I, I said to uh, the conference committee, I was able to add in the conference committee 1,500 new medical residency slots nationally. Um, that's a huge number. Through the VA? Through the VA, through the wow. VA. So those will be located at the VA, so it's about, the strategy is to, my strategy is to enlarge the total number of medical residencies. Now here's the other thing, Brad, Please. about medical residencies. Medical residencies really do determine often where doctors actually practice. Right. So it's one thing for us to have a UCR medical school, and it's a great thing, I, I wanna support it. Uh, and it's actually, this idea for the medical residencies came from the community and said, look, we have a medical school, but we don't have enough medical residencies. The medical residencies are not only key uh, to implementing the ACA, they're also key to where doctors locate. Because think about it, you do your four years of undergraduate, you go to four years of med school, you apply and try a match for a residency, but if our UCR med students have to go someplace else, that other community is gonna capture that doctor because there's a 60% chance uh, that where the med student does the residency, that's where they're gonna locate. And as I understand it, UCR Med has been looking to have half its class be IE residents, but that won't help if they don't do their residency in the that's IE. That's right, that's right. If they match to a residency someplace else in the country. Mm -hmm. So we need to, you know, Senator Roth and, right. uh, have, and I have been having discussions Jose about- Jose Medina. Jose Medina. Medina. Right. Mm -hmm. Strat I mean, they did a, a magnificent job mm -hmm. of, of getting the funding for the med school. Uh, but uh, the federal government fl funds by far the lion's share. That's where the, that's where the action is as far as medical residencies. I want to ask more about the Affordable Care Act. Yes. If you just look at the numbers, you know, forget the politics, it's hard to deny that the Affordable Care Act was a success, including and specifically in California. I, I think that's true. I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree with that, actually. Right. I'm not going to qualify that. Right. We have 47,000 new, uh, 47,000 people signed up. Uh, for health care. Is this in the... in the... In the 41st district alone. Oh, wow. Okay. We had one out of every four people in my district uh, were without health care. Uh, the Affordable uh, Health Care Act has yeah. given us uh, a great opportunity to ensure many of those people who had no options. Let me tell you a story please, about please. Uh, a woman I knew uh, in high school. And really? Yes. Oh. Uh, she was two years ahead of me. Um, and you grew old, up out here, right? Yes, the yeah. older sister, La Sierra High School. Oh my. The <laughs> older sister of uh, one of my good friends. Uh -huh. uh, she was unable to get health care for many years because she couldn't afford it. She had to go to the private market. She wasn't working for any company that mm -hmm. offered health insurance, so she went without it. Um, she was therefore so eager to be able to get health care under the ACA. She signed up last fall, this is around the enrollment mm -hmm, period. Mm -hmm. Um, because of the tax credits and right. the subsidies, mm -hmm. she was able to afford a plan. Um, even with the narrow networks under these plans, she right. was able to find a doctor. Uh, the doctor, around February, March, told her that she had breast cancer. Oh my. And she, she, she said to me uh, in an email, thank God right. the timing. For, uh, right. the, for Obamacare, thank God for the Affordable Care Act, uh, because she would have been facing uh, financial ruin at her age. She's like in her, her late, her mid to late 50s now. Or stage now. four before she even realized she was sick. That's, a, that's exactly right. She mm. wouldn't have been able to go to the doctor. Mm. Uh, so that's, to me, a very powerful story mm. of someone here who had a real concrete, now there are deductible issues, and, but you know, the real well, value of the- Fix of the, it next session. Yeah, the real value <laughs> of the Affordable Care Act is the fact that uh, there are limits on out-of-pocket right. expenses. No lifetime limits on the amount of benefits no you can pay. No pre-existing. No pre-existing conditions, etc. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. His name is Mark Takano. Yeah, he is thanks. a member of the U.S. Congress. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition.